made of particles. We're made of atoms. Atoms consist of electrons whirling around on the outside and a nucleus in the middle. And the seeds of the nucleus are protons and neutrons, which in turn we now know are made of quarks. So electrons and quarks are the basic letters of nature's alphabet. Number two, the quarks. To make the protons and neutrons of atomic nuclei, two varieties of quarks are enough, up and down. The up has got positive electrical charge of two-thirds and the down has got negative one-third in the units where the proton has positive one and the electron has negative one. Number three, antimatter. It's not just science fiction, it's science fact. To every particle there is an equal and opposite antiparticle. The electron of matter is balanced by the positron of antimatter. And indeed it's true, if matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate. So if you play that in reverse, the energy of the Big Bang produced matter and antimatter. Number four, how do we know what matter is made of? Well, the answer is we smash pieces together in what's called particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. By smashing protons or other particles together, we can work out what they're made of and see their little component parts and eventually see deep inside them and expose the quarks that live in the middle of the proton. Number five, when we smash particles together in accelerators, what we now realize is, in addition to learning what matter is made of, we're discovering where it came from. Because for a brief moment, when these particles smash together, you're recreating in a very small volume the heat energy conditions that the universe itself experienced within a trillionth of a second of the Big Bang. Number six. Well, if particles are like the letters of nature's alphabet, what's the grammar, the rules that says how they stick together? And that's the forces of nature. And the ones that the particle physicist uses most of the time are the electromagnetic force, which holds atoms together, the weak force, which drives a certain form of radioactivity, and the strong force, which holds quarks together and builds up atomic nuclei. Number seven, one of the great mysteries has been where do the masses of particles come from? Why do the forces have the properties that they do? And the answer, we now believe, is due to something called the Higgs boson, which was discovered in 2012 and is the particle proof that we are immersed in some weird field called the Higgs field, which occupies all of space, and as particles pass through it, they gain the properties that we have measured. Number eight, why wasn't nature satisfied with just the up and the down quark? For some reason, it decided to do it three times over, with the charm and the strange quark, which are copies of the up and down, but heavier. And then the top and the bottom, which are copies yet again, but heavier still. We call these three generations. And the electron is also one of three, the muon and the tau. And there are three varieties of neutrinos. Number nine. Well, I just mentioned neutrinos, and I never mentioned them before. <laughs> what are they? They're funny little neutral particles with almost no mass at all. They're passing through your eyeballs millions at a time right now as we speak. Most of them come from the sun. You yourself are producing about 100 neutrinos a second through radioactivity in your bones. They're one of the most mysterious particles in the universe, and they are used to probe the properties of the weak force. Number 10, well, it's true that we know pretty well everything about the stuff that we're made of, which sounds great until I admit that that's a very small part of the universe as a whole. Most of the matter in the universe appears to be dark, meaning it doesn't shine in any wavelength that we can access. And what the nature of this dark matter is, is one of the great mysteries.